All right, in this video, I'm going to talk about some of the basic principles of creating forms in Visual Basic. Um, here is what I'm covering from the textbook. You might be able to notice that it's not everything from the apply the concepts section of chapter one. That's because I actually want you to go through and, um, you know, do that yourself. Actually, you know, they, they guide you through some little exercises and all that kind of stuff. I want you to go through and follow along and do all that kind of stuff. This video is more about giving you some of the, uh, the actual principles that are happening behind uh, the apply the concepts part of the textbook. So my hope is that you watch this video and then you have an idea of what's going on you know, you'll have a solid grasp of those principles when you're actually doing the apply the concepts lesson. So when we talk about Windows Forms, uh, what I'm really referring to is an application that has a Windows user interface. The form itself is the, you know, the window that you're looking at and that form has things on it. It will run on a computer that has Windows and you can actually use a form template to create your Windows forms. And the textbook actually has the uh, instructions on how to go open the templates and um, choose a form template when you're creating a new project. So I do recommend that you look at that. Uh, in terms of files, when you're actually writing code, you're putting text in a file and then that file gets compiled into an application. Uh, the source file is a file that contains, well, code in general, but for the purposes of this class, a source file contains Visual Basic code, and it has a .vb file name extension. Now, if your file explorer doesn't show file extensions, if it doesn't show things like .docx or .vb or .mp3 or whatever, um, th the textbook should have some instructions on how to show uh, file extensions, I believe in the uh, preface to the textbook. You're also welcome to ask me for help and I can guide you through that. But if you see a file that has a .vb file name extension, uh, that is a file, a source file, it contains Visual Basic code. A form file is a source file that actually contains code for a form. It still has a .vb file name extension because it's still Visual Basic, but it's a Visual Basic source file that contains code for a form. So when you go into the template and you create a new form, um, that form uh, is going to be saved in a form file. And you might have other Visual Basic files that don't have a form in it, uh, and maybe that form located within the form file might refer to other uh, pieces of Visual Basic code in other source files, but a form file specifically contains code for a form. Here are some uh, commonly used form properties, uh, things that you can actually set within a form and then use for that form. Uh, I'll very briefly go through it, but you uh, can pause and take a look at yourself, or you can also go through the textbook yourself. Uh, accept button is a, uh, you essentially point it towards one of the buttons that you create for your form, and that is the default button that is selected when the user presses the enter key. So, uh, for example, if you have a form that has like an OK and a cancel buttons, um, if you press enter, it might default to OK. If the person who created that form put the OK button within the uh, accept button property. So a property can actually, you can put the name of an object inside of a property and that will, you know, apply that object to whatever property. But Visual Basic um, essentially has some code to determine when the user presses enter, they look at the forms accept button property and then uh, activate that specific button as if it were clicked. Uh, back color is the background color of the form. Uh, we saw two forms that had a gray background, uh, so that back color would be gray. Cancel button uh, specifies a button that is cancel or 
specifies a uh, button that is selected when the user presses the escape key, similar to accept button, but um, if they press escape, it kind of gets them out of that form. Uh, control box. It indicates whether the form controls contains the control box and minimize, maximize, and close buttons. You can actually create applications that don't have minimize, maximize, and close buttons, but that's uh, specified with the control box. Uh, font is just the font to use for text, what the text is going to look like. Uh, form border style is appearance and behavior of the form's border. Maximize box is the state of the maximize button. So if that's true, um, then that indicates that the box, the form is maximized, let's say. Uh, minimize box specifies the state of the minimize button. Um, both those would probably be true or false. Uh, and, you know, we're not worrying so much about it right now. Name, we've talked about the name. Give it meaningful. I give it a meaningful one and a unique one uh, with the conventions that we talked about. Start position indicates the starting position of the form where it's located on the screen. And text specifies the text that appears in the form's title bar and on the task bar. Make sure you're saving your files. When you are working in Visual Studio, uh, you need to make sure that when you're making changes and stuff, you hit the save button or you use the shortcut control S or something like that. But you always want to make sure that you're saving your files. If Visual Studio crashes for whatever reason, you might lose your files you know, any progress that you've made on it since you last saved, or if your computer runs out of battery, or if you lose power and you're working on a desktop or uh, something like that, your changes might not be saved. So you always have to remember to save your files. Um, the textbook says 10 or 15 minutes. I personally do it way more often, um, but at least, or at, you know, every, every 10 or 15 minutes, Make sure you're hitting Control S or make sure you're hitting the save icon in order to save your progress so you don't lose anything. Uh, controls in this case refers to an object, let's say like a picture box or a button or something like that, that is added to a form. So for the Einstein example, a contr the controls might be the equation for the, um, e you know, the equation picture e equals mc squared picture. Uh, you would have a control for each individual button, so show equation, hide equation, cancel, or exit, all of those are controls, all that kind of stuff. You can add them to a form, you can move them around, and you can change their size, all that kind of stuff. You're also able to lock controls once they are in the correct position. You know, you move them into the correct position and then you lock them and it prevents them from being accidentally moved again, which is really nice. So that's a really useful thing that you should take advantage of in order to prevent accidental moving. So a picture box is an example of a control and we have some really useful properties for a picture box. Uh, the image actually specifies the image to display. So you're going to tell the, um, you know, you're going to tell Visual Basic where that image is located using a uh, f file path. You uh, point to where the picture is on your computer and then it's able to display that image. Um, usually you're going to want to put the images maybe in the same file as your code or maybe you make a folder, a subfolder of your project folder that says pictures and then you put all your pictures in there or something like that. But you want to, it's helpful to keep them close to the project. Uh, the name, you can give the picture box a meaningful name. Uh, size mode uh, just specifies how the image should be displayed. And then visible actually allows you to hide or display the picture box. And we actually saw that with the E equals MC squared picture. You could click show and then visible would become true. And that tells Visual Basic to display the picture box. And then you click hide and it that visual uh, property becomes false and that signals to Vis Visual Basic that it should no longer be visible. We have events. Uh, those are created in response to the user's actions. So things like clicking or double clicking or scrolling, even click uh, pressing certain buttons on the keyboard could be considered events, like when the user hits enter or escape, uh, like we talked about previously, how those can be mapped to certain buttons. But events, are essentially, you know, the computer recognizes, hey, the user has clicked and then creates an event and sends that to 
visual basic and the visual basic is able to say okay i have this event what do i do with it and then you can specify certain instructions for visual basic to do when that event happens um, an event procedure is a set of visual basic instructions processed only when the event occurs so essentially in the event procedure you're saying hey what happens when the user actually clicks say the submit button or the show equation button or something like that the event procedure is where you actually write code to say this is what you do this all is actually a great example of some event procedures uh, we actually saw this uh, previously when we were talking about the name property but all of these are event procedures right here and you can tell that they're event procedures because of this handles something if it handles something then it's an event procedure and specifically it's handling button exit dot click so this is the code that says what do i do when someone clicks the exit button here it's what do i do when someone clicks the uh, show button handles says this is an event procedure click the show button what do i do when someone clicks the show button and in this case Right here, we can see that they're trying to show Einstein's equation. That's where this pick equation dot visible equals true comes in. You're saying that, hey, Visual Basic, make the equation picture true now when someone clicks the show button. So this handles right here uh, specifies one of those um, event procedures. All right, well, speaking of all that, let's get into a little bit of writing code. Um, you actually write some of your first pieces of code this week. Yeah. And writing code is all about putting down statements. A statement is one single instruction written in the Visual Basic programming language. Now, a statement might be made of multiple words and symbols and all kinds of stuff. Uh, statements follow a certain syntax. So it's sort of the grammar of what makes a statement valid versus an invalid statement is something that just would appear to be complete nonsense to the computer. So you follow the syntax, you follow the rules that define valid statements, and your programs will work. And then keywords are words that have a special meaning. Coming back to this picture right here, we have a lot of different statements. One uh, example of a statement right here is pick equation dot visible equals true. This statement tells Visual Basic to set the visible property of the object pick equation to be true. So that is what the statement is saying. That is one instruction to the computer. Uh, an example of a keyword is true right here. You can actually see that it's um, highlighted in blue. All of these uh, blue objects, by the way, are keywords. They are words that have special meanings within Visual Basic. And as such, also, you shouldn't make any of these keywords a name for an object or anything like that. But you have a keyword right here. You have a symbol, and we'll talk more about what this equal sign is doing. And you have, um, you know, other text. But that's an example of a statement. Pick equation dot visible equals true. That is one thing that you are telling the computer to do. Uh, and as for the syntax, um, the syntax is going to control things like if you said true equals pick equation dot visible, that would be what's known as a syntax error because that doesn't follow the rules of the syntax. I will talk about this a little more when we have when we talk about this equal sign, but when you have an equal sign like this, you have, you know, some property on the left side, and then on the right side is the thing that you want to become the value of the property. So this statement is saying the visible property of pick equation should now become true. If you said true equals pick equation dot visible, that would be saying the keyword slash value true should now equal pick equation dot visible, which would be really bad because true is a keyword true should be true. It should always remain true. And we'll talk, we'll also talk more about what true and false are later on. 
um, once we actually get into selection structures, which is in a couple chapters, I believe, but true and false are values that represent a statement being true or a statement being false. Regardless, this is one example of a statement right here. A procedure is a group of statements that accomplish a task, and a procedure can be called by other statements to run the group of statements contained within the procedure. Now, a procedure could also be called a subroutine or a function. I might say function quite a bit because that is um, what I'm used to calling them. Uh, subroutines are also pretty common. Uh, actually, Visual Basic refers to them as subroutines, and I'll show you what I mean by that in a sec. Uh, a method is a predefined function provided by Visual Basic. I'll give an example of that as well. But Visual Basic actually gives you some methods that you can call in order to do certain things, which is really nice of them. So we've actually been looking at procedures this whole time. And the reason why I can tell it's a procedure is because of this sub right here. The sub is actually short for subroutine. And when you write out sub like this, it tells Visual Basic that you are trying to create your own procedure. Um, in this case, uh, private, I'll get to that in a sec, sub button exit, uh, and then all the stuff in here. We don't need to worry so much about what is in the parentheses, handles button exit dot click. But when you write out in Visual Basic, you say sub and then some name uh, that v Visual Basic is going to say, okay, so there's going to be an enclosed group of statements that I can then uh, call when someone references this name, button exit underscore click, like this. So writing out the name sub tells Visual Basic that you are starting to write a procedure. And then you have all the statements contained within the procedure, like this. In this case, each of these have only one statement, but you could have as many statements as you want. And then you end sub you write that when you're done actually writing the program and Visual Basic says, okay, well now that that's the end of the subroutine. So I'm going to stop running statements after this end sub when someone is asking me to run this subroutine or this procedure or whatever. So everything between the header right here and the footer, the header of the function, and the footer of the function is actually the statements that get run when you call that function. Now, um, I talked about methods. One of the methods that is actually shown here is the close method. Every single object actually has a close method, which, um, or at least, sorry, every form at least has a close method where when that form, uh, runs that method, they are closed. So the, the window actually closes and you can't use it anymore. The application completely stops. So inside of this sub or this uh, procedure here, button exit underscore click, um, it's uh, we have form main actually calling its own close function me refers to itself. Every object can refer to its own uh, procedures or its own properties or whatever by using the me keyword, as long as you use that me keyword inside of the definition of a class. Um, when it says me.close, it's actually closing itself. Now, private versus public um, actually refers to who is able to access uh, different things. So what we have right here is a public class form main. Uh, anyone can actually access that class. Anyone can interact with objects instantiated from that class. That's totally fine. However, when we have uh, these private procedures here, these private subroutines inside of the class, uh, that means that only the object of that class can access its own versions of those functions. 
nobody outside of the object can access those private those that object's private functions. Only the object can access and call and change things and all that kind of stuff. Um, private allows the object to have things that nobody else can touch. Not even another object of the same type could touch that object's uh, private subroutines or anything like that. An example might be like in the teacher class that I had talked about previously, uh, if one of the um, properties that I had was a social security <laughs> number, um, because sometimes uh, administration and you know record or the payroll and stuff like that, they need access to my social security number. Uh, I would use that as a private, um, you know, property where only I can actually see it. However, I might be able to gain, you know, give access through other means, um, which you know we'll talk about public and private stuff uh, functions and all that kind of stuff. That might be a bit of a later on type of conversation, but only I can actually access my own social security number property. No one else can get that from me. Uh, and then I have to find ways to actually, you know, construct some sort of, let's say, procedure that allows me to take in a request from someone who wants access to my social security number, verify them, and then give it to them or so something like that. That might be a little bit complicated but that's the idea is that a private thing you know i'm a teacher i have my private social security number property or anything like that no other teacher could access that even though they're teachers with their own social security number property they couldn't access mine because it's private only i can access my own private um properties like that and also only i could access or call my own private procedures if i had any all right, so next up, we talked about classes a little bit. A class defines an object that has properties and procedures. We showed off the uh, class definition for form main quite a bit, and it's saying it, it defines every instance of form main. You know, every time we run the application, what is that form going to do? It defines it, it provides the properties and procedures for every object that is of that type of class. And then a comment, which is a line of text that does not run. It helps internally document the program and it's actually completely ignored by the program. So when you write a comment in Visual Basic, uh, Visual Basic doesn't run that at all. It just leaves it in there. All right, so I talked a little bit about this uh, headers and footers idea with subroutines, but classes have them as well. You have the header to tell Visual Basic, hey, I am defining a class right now, and this class is going to be named form main. So public class form main. Public says that anyone is, any uh, object within this program is able to interact with it. Class tells Visual Basic that you're defining a class, and then this gives the name of the class right here. And then, of course, you also end class when you are done actually defining it. So then you can write other stuff on line four and beyond and um not have any not have visual basic think that that all is part of the form main class so you start by public class form main and then you end with end class when we have a class with a procedure um there's the uh indented text for the procedure and then you have a procedure header private sub name of the subroutine all this kind of stuff here. And then the procedure footer, which tells Visual Basic that you're done defining this particular procedure. And then the insertion point that they just, they uh, mentioned here is just um, when you type, that's where text is going to go. I talked about me.close briefly. Um, you put it inside of a forms procedure and it tells that form to close itself. But um, it, all forms have the close method. Uh, when it says me, the form is saying, hey, I want to run my own function. And then the me dot close says, I want to activate my own function. So me, it says I'm referencing myself. The dot says I'm going to access something that's contained within me, whether that's a property or a procedure or something like that. And then when it says close, that is referring 
to the close procedure to close itself. Now, um, something important right here is how there's parentheses after a procedure. Uh, every time that you call a procedure, you will have parentheses after the name of that procedure. Now, sometimes you might have other things inside of those parentheses. We'll get to that later. But there will always be parentheses when you are asking Visual Basic to run that procedure. If you want Visual Basic to execute the statements within a certain procedure with the name close, you type close and then you put parentheses after it. So that's really important. But yeah, me.close is what makes a form close itself. We have the assignment statements. We uh, showed this before. You use the equal sign to assign a value to a property. Um, it always has to be in the syntax object.property equals expression. Um, the thing that you're trying to give a value to should be on the left side and the value should be on the right side. Uh, now, when I say expression, an expression is something that uh, evaluates to some kind of value or something like that. So something that evaluates to a number or it might be a, um, it might be like just a value itself. So the number 120, uh, as shown right here, it might be some math. It might be the result of a calling a procedure or something like that. I, you know, as long as it ends up being a value at some point, that is completely valid. But when you have object.property equals expression, the result of this expression gets put into this uh, property of the particular object. So pick equation.visible equals false. The value of false which says, you know, whatever expression or statement is not, is false, it's not true, this represents a false thing, gets put inside of the visible property of pick equation. What that means is then uh, the visibility of pick equation is false. You're asking, hey, is this visible? And Visual Basic would say, no, it's not visible because the property contains false. So the statement, this picture is visible is a false statement. That's what the false actually means right here. And we'll get more into true and false in the selection uh, statement uh, lectures. Right here, we have label do dot width equals 120. We are setting the width to 120. And then we also have this uh, idea of the string literal. Uh, a string literal is basically us just saying like, hey, here's just a word or a sentence or like a whole bunch of just random characters or something like that. Um, it, you could think of it as like, it's passing around a, um, a, you know, like a note card that says the word Ohio around or something like that. Text state dot text equals Ohio. That property is just holding a flashcard that says the word Ohio. That's essentially what a string is it's, it's it's just like text and we treat that text as like a thing that we can pass around and mess with and uh set to other um you know set to properties and all that kind of stuff sometimes uh strings in some languages are actually objects themselves with their own properties and methods and all that kind of stuff but you know Essentially, when we're talking about a string literal, that is a um, just a piece of text that is getting put into this text thing right here. So anyway, all that is the assignment statement. We take whatever expression is on the right side and we put it into the property on the left side. And it has to be in that order. If we did um, false equals pick equation dot visible or Ohio equals text state dot text uh, that would not make sense the you know visual basic would get mad at us and we would have a lot of errors and then we have comments any line of text that starts with a single quote is known as a comment and I talked about this before it's just not even considered by visual basic visual basic will see the single quote and it will say oh I don't need to worry about this and I'll move on to the next line 
It'll just keep on going. Comments are really helpful because they help document what our code is doing. So you know exactly what every piece of the code is actually doing, why you're doing certain things, what decisions you're making, what all the procedures are doing, what the purpose of different classes are, all that kind of stuff. And we have a lot of examples of comments right here. We have comments at the very top of this code that show you your, um, you know, that, that shows the name of the pro of the uh, program, the purpose of the program, and the uh, name of the programmer and when they actually made it. We also have comments that describe what each uh, subroutine is actually doing. And as your programs get more and more and more complicated, it might be more and more necessary to add more um, pieces of information that are describing what the subroutines are doing and all that kind of stuff. When I write code myself, I write a ton of comments saying what every subroutine is doing. I, I go into quite a bit of detail saying like, this is what this subroutine is taking in, this is what it's doing, and this is what it's outputting. Uh, so I know exactly what everything is doing you know, I'll write the code and I'll test it and make sure everything works and all that kind of stuff. And then I might leave it and work on something else. And when I come back to the code, I might not remember exactly all the details of what's going on, but I can look at those comments and say, oh, this is what's happening here. This is why it works that way. And this is how I should use it. So it's really important. Please make a lot of comments. There's almost no such thing as too many comments. Um, like, it's going to be so helpful if you need help and you're trying to share your code with me. I don't know what you're thinking when you're writing the code, right? I don't know what's going on, what solution you're trying to implement, what your thoughts are. I don't know anything like that. So when I'm looking at your code, I have to try to figure out what's going on. I'm piecing it together like it's some kind of, uh, murder mystery or something like that. Um, I, it, it genuinely is a very investigative process, not only figuring out what's supposed to happen, but then also figuring out, well, why isn't it happening? Um, uh, genuinely, actually, it, it can be kind of fun, but if you want to make it easier and if you want to um, get faster help, you know, Making a lot of comments is going to be absolutely key to that because then I can see what every function is supposed to do and I can see why you're making certain choices, especially if there's like some really complicated math going on somewhere in your program and it just looks like you're pulling a whole bunch of stuff out of nowhere. Even though you know what's going on, it might be really helpful for you to comment, hey, this is what this piece of code is doing and why I need it to do that can be really helpful. Uh, and this is especially true because a lot of programmers <laughs> work in teams. Uh, I talked about the job of the programmer being, you know, you get hired on, you uh, make a solution and all that kind of stuff. But a lot of times you're going to be working in a team of people. Now you might have your piece of the code that you're working on in the whole project. You might not even, you might have multiple people working inside of the same file, but you know, even in the case where you have your own piece of the code, it's really important for you to um, actually put a lot of comments inside of that code because other people might be looking through it and trying to see, okay, what's going on in this function because they might need to use the work that you've done as part of like the larger project. So it's really useful for teamwork and it's really useful for me helping you. Um, you'll get feedback faster. You don't have to worry about it nearly as much. So make lots of comments. Um, it's a little bit of work up front, but it saves a lot of time in the long run from you know, preventing you from misremembering how things work, preventing me from spending a lot of time figuring out what is going on. And then maybe in the future, uh, helping out your colleagues understand what's going on. So that is a very basic overview of the forms in Visual Basic. Again, I do really want you to actually go through the apply 
the concepts part of chapter one in the textbook, you can access that on MindTap. But I want you to actually go through, follow along in your own visual basic and all that kind of stuff, because I think it's going to be more valuable for you to do that than me um, walking through everything and just uh, just showing everything. If you're able to like figure out where things are from the textbook, I think that will be really helpful. So I want you to do that. But regardless, that is uh, everything for chapter one this week.